Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Boardroom to Bounce House. I'm Tana, and today's video is all about wrapping for Christmas. Today's video is a collaboration with my friend Megan from Times to Remember, and she has some great tips for you on how to get the kiddos involved in wrapping. So if you need those tips, definitely head on over to her channel next. I will have her video linked below in the description box. And if Megan sent you over to my channel, please introduce yourself in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing some wrapping this evening. I did some wrapping last night. I do have another video of just wrapping motivation where I'm wrapping gifts from a certain special someone. Um, so I do have that uh, linked below if you'd like to check it out for some motivation. But as far as some tips or how to when it comes to wrapping, tonight I'm going to do a little bit more of a instructional how to. My favorite place to buy wrapping paper is Marshalls or TJ Maxx. I paid $2.99 for this roll this year. It's premium quality gift wrap. It is about uh, 30 inches by 12 feet. And I really like this paper. Um, this is from a different brand. Same price though at Marshalls. Also this year I got um, just a brown paper with Christmas trees on it. And then last year my paper was this kind of buffalo check. This like white and black buffalo check. I think that these will look nice together and kind of tie the old paper to some of the new papers that I got in the more neutral tones. So I'm gonna use up what is left of last year's roll. The first thing that you want to do when you're wrapping the gifts is make sure you're not wasting, first of all. I like to use my tape, my tape to sort of flatten out the paper. Um, but the system that I have for this is getting the thing you're gonna wrap to the edge of the sheet making sure that you're gonna have room on this back side. So I already, I know that this will cover this. And then I like to roll it so I know how much paper I'm gonna need. And then I'm gonna be able to cut here. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room, but you're gonna be able to cut there. And you already know, you've pre-measured, you know that it's going to fit. The worst is when the worst is when you don't pre-measure and you cut a piece and then it's the wrong size and then you can't, you it's not even the right size for anything else and then you feel like you're wasting paper. Um, so you definitely wanna pre-measure. The other thing about pre-measuring is it actually makes it easier to wrap the gift because if you pre-measure, you don't end up with all this extra you know, paper that's in your way when you're going to actually fold the corners. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna bring this up. Now I like to, if I'm trying to be fancy, if I'm not wrapping like a kid's gift or you know something like that and I really want it to look nice, I like to fold over the edge like so and make kind of like a crisp line there so that when I bring the paper up and go up the top, it just looks a little bit fancier. It looks a little bit nicer. It's a nice clean line. You don't have like a like, jiggly jaggly line because sometimes my cuts aren't perfect, right? I mean, on this side, these aren't the same length. I clearly didn't go at a perfect angle. Uh, and so I like to just fold that over because I think it adds a nice touch. I put my tape this way. I've seen people put the tape this way. I have no idea why you would do that. You're not getting as much surface area <laughs> that way. Um, I like to kind of just rub it in, make sure that's on there tightly. And then the next step is to fold the sides in as so, like this, and focus on one side at a time. So I like to sort of know, okay, that's where my seals are gonna be. I turn it this way. I'm folding it down and I'm making crisp lines on each side here of this, of this item, okay? I, and then I'm folding, you don't need to put tape here. I mean, you could if it's really wiggly and you feel like you can't get it to lay flat, you could add a little piece of tape. But in this case, I don't need to do that. This is basic, simple shape that I'm wrapping. So I'm gonna crisp the, the corner again and I'm just gonna fold it in and I'm gonna pull it tight so that I can make another crisp line here on the inside. And I can also make a crisp line here on the outside. So do you see how I made a crisp line here and I made a crisp line there okay to get it you know as tight as you can to the to the wall of the box and then you're gonna take the other side and you're gonna do the exact same thing you're gonna fold it in you're gonna get it as tight as possible you're gonna make a crisp line 
down here at the bottom of the triangle and then here at the side of the triangle. Now in this case you can see that this edge is actually folding over, okay? And that's because as I said, I didn't do a perfect job when I cut this side of the paper. So one side was longer than the other. You have two choices. You could go ahead and cut this on the inside only, right, to trim this so that it's not longer than this side. Or you could simply just fold it back if you don't wanna cut it. You could just fold it back as I have here. See how I folded that back? And so now when I fold it up, you don't see what's underneath, right? It's a crisp line. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna push it in. I'm gonna get a piece of tape ready. I'm gonna fold this up and I'm gonna put it like so on the back here and I'm just gonna press that in. And again, I'm gonna rub it with my back of my thumb, my fingernail. And there you have a nice square. Um, and this isn't perfect. I mean, this is a little bit bigger of a corner than this one, but for the most part, it looks pretty straight. Now, where you can get it really crisp is the opposite side because the side that you do first usually is a little bit more difficult because you don't have anything to push on. You don't have anything that you can like really make sure it's tight in there. Now this is secured on this side. So when I push, I'm able to get a really nice crisp tight line on this side. So again, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna run my finger here all the way in. Then I'm gonna make a line, crisp line here. I'm gonna do it on the other side here. Make a crisp line on the outside. I'm gonna fold one corner in. Crisp line on the bottom of the triangle. Crisp line on the outside of the triangle. Inside, outside. And then same thing on this side. Bottom of the triangle. and then the outside of the triangle. I'm gonna fold that little teeny, teeny tiny piece in. Now, one thing I didn't show you on this side, this is an optional fold. I just did a point here. Some people prefer to actually take this triangle fold and they will fold the corner in like that and then they will fold it. This is too small of a gift in my opinion to do that. I think it will look better with just a regular point. I actually prefer a pretty regular point most of the time unless it's a really big package or you just have like a really awkward amount of paper. But you could, you know, fold that triangle point into a straight line here. Um, so there you have it. So now this is completely, you know, wrapped and covered. I can sort of crisp seal the sides a bit. And that's why I like using this paper from like a Marshalls, a TJ Maxx, a Home Goods. When you get a nicer brand paper, this is Bella Lux brand, is a Slay Hill Trading Company. I don't know exactly what this is because I bought this last year, but it came from the same store. So it's something similar. When you use a higher quality paper like this, you're gonna have a much easier time wrapping and your gifts are gonna just come out so much nicer. If I go to, I mean, I love Target, don't get me wrong, but if I go to Target or Walmart and I buy you know, a two to five dollar roll of paper from Target or Walmart, maybe it's buy two for five dollars. Nine times out of 10, I get it home. It's extremely thin and, and in fact, I have an example upstairs that I bought I think two years ago and I've never used this paper again. I don't even know why I'm keeping it. I should just KonMari it and throw it out because it's terrible. Every time I try to wrap with it, it rips. The corners rip while you're trying to wrap with it. It's no good. So definitely make sure you invest in nicer paper if you want your gift to truly look spectacular. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do after this is I'm going to add some ribbon and possibly a gift tag. Um, I love to save the ribbons from years past. This is like a little ribbon that probably came on like a little jewelry package at one point. I mean, that looks really simple. You could do something like that. I tend to be a really big fan of fabric ribbons. If you really wanted to go crazy with the buffalo check, you could do a buffalo check on buffalo check. I'm not really feeling that today. Okay, we're gonna go with this silver and see if this will work out. So I like to use, um, preferably I like to use wire ribbon. So this ribbon, has a little bit of wire in the side, so I'm able to shape it. 
But I will also use ribbon with no wire. This is a non-wired ribbon, such as, you know, the satin one. Um, this one doesn't have wire. So when you don't have wire, you just, you can't do as many structural things with your bows. I really wanted to use the silver ribbon. I'm probably only going to be able to do once around the packaging. And in that case, you're going to start by putting it in the back of the package where the tape is, bringing it forward to the front, then tying it off. And if this has been used before, you want to try to put the knot where the ribbon already kind of is wrinkly or knotty. So I'm going to put that there. Kind of make sure that this is looking good still. And then I like to do, I like to put my pinky over the knot. This is weird, I'm like doing this slow so I can explain it. Put the pinky over the knot and then use your pinky to hold that down while you make a second loop. Okay, now I've made that second loop and I can easily just slide the knot down. And as I get closer, I can pull my pinky out and I can tighten the knot. That way you're not like fumbling. You're able to use your pinky to hold the knot down, okay? So there it is with the knot. Now there's a number of different things you could do on the top. I'm just gonna do a very simple bow on this one. So I'm just gonna, again, you know, make the bunny ears. And I'm gonna loop it, loop it around. Or you could, you know, you make your two bunny ears and you tie it. There's lots of different ways you can tie a bow. I'm sure you all know how to tie a bow. If you don't, let me know in the comments. <laughs> I can help you out with some more videos. And I'm just gonna tighten this, okay? And you just wanna get it to like an appropriate bow size, right? Like you don't want it to be like super huge or awkward. You want it to be the right size for the packaging. Um, I kind of think this needs crisper edges. So there's a couple different ways you could cut your edges. You could just do a straight line like so. You could do a line and then do another one. So you end up with a triangle, which is a bit harder because, you know, you want it to be symmetrical. In this case, I think it looks better if I just, you know, cut an edge. And then I'm gonna cut a fresh edge over here. And there you have it. You have a nice little simple bow on your package. It'll look really pretty under your tree. And this was a pretty simple example. We can do another example in just a moment with wired ribbon. Okay, when it comes to like a shirt box that you're gonna put tissue into, I have a strong opinion about this. Maybe it comes from my early teenage years working in retail. Back then we actually, I feel like we wrapped gifts for people in the store. Um, so I'm just gonna use a basic white tissue here today. My feeling when it comes to the tissue is you don't wanna just like plop the tissue in the box, right? Like that's awkward, you open it up, the tissue's all awkward and wrong size. You wanna actually separate these sheets and I would say like take two sheets cause then it's a little bit more thick. Then I'm taking my item which I've wrapped tissue around for that element of surprise, and then I'm covering it with the tissue, like so. So now when someone opens the box, they're not just gonna see like an item kind of wrapped in random tissue or an item just thrown into the box. They're gonna open it, they're gonna have to think, oh, what's inside? They open one side, they open another, they still see tissue, they're still wondering, now they have to take it out and actually look at it. So that's, that's my strategy when it comes to tissue. Tell me below if you have a different strategy. Maybe I can learn something from you, um, but that's, that's my strategy for tissue. Now this is actually a very pretty box. You could wrap this. I'm kind of feeling like I might wanna leave this plain because I do have a lot of these brown papers and this might tie kind of nicely together. I'm gonna use this really gorgeous, I've had this for years. I think I got this from my mom. Shout out to my mom if she's watching. She watches some of my videos. <laughs> even though I'm constantly like, mom, watch my videos. Don't forget to like them and comment. But I think my mom gave me this ribbon and I've had it for a long time. And it's great, it like has really held up. It's probably from a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. But I like this because it has this like wire in the corner and in the side. 
So it's really good for making really pretty elaborate bows. Um, my mom taught me how to make bows, so that's another shout out to my mama. She's watching. She's the bow queen. When I was a kid in the 90s, she had this bow thing that she bought off of an infomercial and she made the craziest bows like all over our house. We had bows on the top of like every window treatment. Bows were really in then. So anyway, that's who I learned my bow making skills from. And I wanna do it sort of like three fourths of the way up because I want the bow to be sort of towards the top. Um, okay, so I've got my bow situated. They're basically even. I'm gonna go ahead and do a loop here. I'm gonna tighten this pinky just to hold it down while I do another loop because that's gonna secure it in place so it's not like wiggling around. Just try to like sort of fluff it a bit so you don't end up with kind of crazy cinching, but just sort of fluff it a bit. And then I'm gonna make a bow. So I'm gonna do kind of like, I'd love to do a double bow here if I can. could come through with your floral wire and you could you could wrap it like this at the bottom probably have too much floral wire here I don't need this much I wrapped it around twice and now I'm just gonna like twist it in place I'm gonna cut off this extra length that I don't need save that for something else Cinch it down like so. You could take another, you know, type of ribbon that you have and cover that floral wire if you wanted to. Um, I don't think you're really gonna see it once I fluff it up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start fluffing these loops that I made. I can get creative and make something pretty. So there you have it. There's my bow with kind of five loops. Okay, so I'm just gonna use uh, some of this old white Merry Christmas ribbon to show you another way that you can do a similar bow to what we just talked about. So, and this is better on ribbon where one side is different than the other. So obviously this side is printed, this side is not. So you always wanna make sure that the printed side is showing. So we're going to start by making a loop and I'm going to pinch the loop my fingers and the next thing I want to do is just twist this ribbon so I'm again joining it I'm holding it with my fingers then I'm going to turn it essentially twist it so that the pretty side is showing up again and I'm going to make another loop and I'm going to bring the fabric across the bottom and just again pinch it where the original loop was I have the same problem the ugly side is facing up so I want to twist it and I'm going to make another loop and I'm going to run it underneath and pinch it in the same place so now I have three loops again ugly side is showing the wrong direction so I need to twist this then I'm going to make my fourth loop pinch it ugly side is showing up so I need to twist so I'm gonna do one more loop. So I'm gonna come back across the bottom, I'm still pinching it, ugly side, twist, pretty side, and then I'm going to, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm gonna loop, because I want six loops, okay? 
So I just did my six loops. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to put the floral wire through the bow, through the loops, because I'm holding all the loops in the same spot. So I'm gonna put the floral wire through, I'm gonna gather it in the back. Probably should have cut a bigger piece of floral wire, but it's fine. And I'm going to twist it. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride, and soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was lean and light, misfortune seemed as light. We got into a drifted bag and then we got upside. Oh, okay, I'm not sure about this ribbon. Too much glitter. It's a mess. Glitter mess. Ride in a one horse open slate. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh.
65 chances of the year To try to make it right, you have to see it clear We all need a helping hand to put our things aside It's time to take a stand with our eyes open Nothing will regret You don't have to Believe in Santa Claus To know what's right to do Fighting for a cause in here. 
I have two more boxes of things to wrap. Got my rolls, got my tissue, just brought some boxes down. Some more stuff to wrap. That's stuff the grandparents sent to enjoy the season. So I'll bring that upstairs. This is what I have wrapped so far today. This is my third day of wrapping. And this is what I have wrapped so far. Some laundry and we're gonna get some more done. LOL kids, I don't know what to say. I wanna say the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. So let's get rapping again and sing some more tunes. It's cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe. And I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for you and me. The snow is falling down, and the storm is on its way. But as long as you're around, everything will be okay. Cause all I wanna do is spend this holiday with you Tomorrow it is Christmas The first for me and you I longed for this moment To have you for myself In a cabin out of nowhere Just us and no one else I've decorated everything To be perfect for this week Tomorrow Since July, I've been happier than I have ever been. It's safe to say that my love for you is true. Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for me and you. I longed for this moment to have you for myself in a cabin out of
hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Maybe you learned a thing or two about how to make really easy, simple bows or how to get those professional, crisp looking corners. If you did, leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and press that red subscribe button and turn on your notifications. This video was a collaboration with my friend Megan, so don't forget to check out her channel next. I will also link Megan's blog below, and on her YouTube channel, you will find all things motherhood. She is a mom of two with her third baby arriving in March, and she has lots of organization tips for you, as well as all things memory making. So head on over and check it out when you're done watching my video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, friends. Thank you.